Hi guys, so if people want to try uh, five ciphers, I made the first uh, alpha version and uh, maybe it will evolve a lot, but if you want to test, uh, so it's uh, an audio plugin and uh, it has a sidechain input. So yeah, I made really a shitty bass and kick just to test. And uh, you can pick a s on the plugin. You can first pick a side chain. So I'll, I'll pick my kick here. And uh, when you open the plugin, so there is a text explaining. For now, it's a demo, so it won't save uh, the presets uh, to the door and reopen. But it let us test uh, uh, the plugin. Uh, and uh, so the idea is, it's kind of multi-purpose tool. Uh, the idea was to have kind of usually I often do on my bass like uh, some side chain, some EQ, some dynamic EQ, some phase uh, modulation, phase transform, some uh, with a lot of plugins like Telephoto, Voxengo, FA979, um, some EQ. So I wanted to have one plugin that can centralize it all and go deeper in some uh, of those areas so i'm gonna make a quick tour of uh, the interface so when it open we can just click to show the interface so ma mainly we have a curve editor there is a scope like space scope and uh, top bar top bar you have a uh, input volume so we can click to mute drag to set the volume and a right click to set to zero db uh, bypass will bypass all the processing and when we shift uh, when we drag we can set the dry weight for all processors that's not really dry weight that's the force of each processor but uh, there's a global control here then we got set up i'm gonna explain a bit um, then if it's mono or stereo because if the the input is mono we can uh, just maybe do one channel and to save cpu and then copy this channel to the other channel so it saves cpu and then here uh, there is, are no present for now but on the uh, final version there will be all the present list so previous presets next present load the present from disk write that won't be in the demo but uh, undo or do and you need to set the patch by default then you got uh, output meter uh, output knob uh, same that input uh, can right click to reset to the db mute then there's a limiter optional limiter we can enable and with the plus arrow we can set the limiters option and then here it shows us the peak uh, the current peak of the output okay so the um, the main idea is there are several there is one big processor that's that is spectral so for those who know it's it's uh, it's using F uh, fft short time fourier transform to analyze the signal and in uh, convert it from time domain to frequency domain using frames so the signal is split in frames so that let us analyze of the frequency and phase that we can ma then manipulate and uh, then we can recombine do the inverse process to to reconstruct the time domain and, uh, and there is a more classical let's say no latency module that is uh, lfo on the volumes for example like uh, lfo tool or, or stuff uh, so when you open it, by default, the spectral engine is off to save CPU. If you want just choose on a volume, by default, there is a matrix and it will already have linked. We have um, some source here and destination with the text here. So there are two LFOs here and here, which are the first two. Then with the, we have a recorder, which is this one. And um, an envelope follower that will uh, analyze the sidechain input and we can uh, assign those to some targets 
So if I press play, so it sounds shitty probably, but just to give you an idea, by default there is an LFO and it's on the volume, so it's like uh, ducking uh, each bit. Here we can set the, the speed of the LFO. So yeah, if if there is no no plugin, it's uh, always playing. Here we can see the LFO is ducking uh, basically the volume. So on the modulation matrix, it's because here it's uh, on top it's the uh, maximum value, on bottom is the uh, low, lowest value. That means that the curve at the top will be one. If I click, I can see the values will be one. So the volume will be one, and at the bottom it will be zero. When you right click on the bottom, you set to zero, or you can go lower to minus one, or or still let pass a bit. Basically, you adjust the range with the top and bottom. Or you can also use the middle uh, button and uh, drag up and down for maybe invert, or, uh, or you can shift left or right or the range. That's it. And uh, when you click, you enable or disable the, this uh, assignation. And here you have, you have some previews of the source and destination. And then we, uh, what I wanted to have is it's, uh, you have snapshots, so you can, when you're happy with something, let's say this, I can right click on a, on a cell here and it will save all the, pre all the settings of the current, uh, set, uh, current setting of the plugins to this cell. And then maybe I can uh, test a different setting, for example, uh, and I can save it to another cell. And then we can recall by clicking. And this can be uh, remoted by MIDI if I enable this. And if I was to route um, some MIDI to, to PsyPhase, the first canal uh, will, uh, uh, will uh, react to the notes. So when you, if you play C with me, it will play these uh, settings and uh, understand <laughs> um, so what else I will lower the volume so yeah for the um, spectral engine I will switch it on so by default it's off as, as soon as you enable one of those three it enables the spectral engine and the spectral engine has a phase module to to manipulate the phase a frequency module for the frequencies and the correlator. I will uh, try to explain a bit. So phase module first is, um, for example, here I have a saw and it's it's asymmetric. There, there was a low pass on it, so we can see uh, with the fast shift it shifted all the subs. And uh, with the phase module we can try to correct the timing. So we can if I enable the fast Phase modulation, you can see here I'm shifting the sub, and if I switch it off, I'm picking at three above zero. I'm picking at plus three, plus three, and with some correction, I can manage to go down to minus two. So that's more than five dB of headroom that I gain. Uh, that's one example of the possible use. So basically, here you have the um, frequency range on the phase rotation minus 180 to 180 and you can uh, shift all the um, you could shift all the spectrum and that makes like a box and go uh, phase rotation or we can do it per frequency here so here i know i put an alp an uh, high pass so i know this kind of filter make uh, the same kind of of uh, curve of phase shift so I can invert this kind of uh, curve to kind of cancel the phase shift that was introduced by the filter. So that can be handy to, we can see here it's more, much more balanced, uh, less asymmetric, and we basically we have realigned the sub to the, because the saw is made of a stack of uh, many sinus, and, uh, and when you shift some, some component, we, we break the symmetry, now we realign real that. But that's one example. In some cases, 
I will bring back a normal saw. In some cases, you do want some fast shift to to make some correlations. There are many people that use uh, multi bands or stuff to even if not e e even uh, if not processing to to make to give some color, some fast shift and, and break the symmetry. But uh, so PsyFast can do it all because basically we can do whatever we want with the. Here, uh, here from the normal saw, I can shift only the sub and bring this asymmetry we, we see here. And uh, and we can go to some extreme settings to to make some color. For example, here it's a linear phase uh, processing, but it's uh, in the first section, finite impulse response. And uh, basically here we have uh, the degrees for the wall curve. The, the wall frequency spectrum, how we can shape uh, with the curve as we want. We can right click to reset or double click to enter values. Uh, and here it's the depth, that means that at one by default, it means that there will on be only one uh, rotation, uh, phase rotation uh, from top to bottom. But if we go extreme, we can raise this. And, and I, I don't know if you can hear. It's 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 really it it kind of makes some psychedelic sound because we, we make uh, extreme frequency manipula manipulation in extreme phase. So here the sub is really fucked up, and uh, we can uh, make some really psychedelic sound with this. For those who know disperser or uh, or uh, uh, form of melda free phase, uh, it's kind of the same. So yeah, but but going less drastic, we can bring some coloring like the like what you got on some multi bands, and we can shape it a bit uh, the way we want. So that's one mode. But uh, on phase, there are two processors. We can do it um, in linear phase, or we can do it. Uh, there is this another section which use um, more. Um, infinite impulse response filters so, so that's a stack of all paths all paths they are basically like your high pass and, uh, and low pass except they don't affect magnitude of the frequencies they only affect the phase like your high pass or low pass does affect the phase but the all pass will only affect the phase so it's uh, interesting because we can color, give some color to the sound uh, by stacking, so basically, the more the more we stack some old pass in series, the more we're gonna generate some fast shift. It will peel up, and so these engines allow to do this, to to stack some old pass or so add number of poles or the number of filters in serial, and you can set the hertz. And um, so if I, I I put a lot of uh, filters, I can go up to 32. We we'll have uh, this laser, uh, laser fast shift effect. I will maybe make it a bit more. Uh, uh, this beware of the laser, laser effect. Yeah, it's less. Yeah, it's really extreme. And we have a spread to give some stereo. If here we can on the scope, we can show. So for those who know side scope, I will make a quick. Uh, but we can show left and right. And here we see they have a slightly different spread, so so we can create some stereo. So we go back to okay. So this is a. Uh, all pass and there are two modes one is uh, not to go into technical here but one is more stable um, when you really move fast the hertz and one is more classical with uh, resonance settings that can give you more color uh, more palette let's say but um, yeah it's a different flavor so you can test so that's a uh, phase uh, phase menu 
And there is a one octave or a real time octaver which basically try to shift one octave above the, the amplitude of the frequencies that are playing. And we can uh, set the level of that octave on the level of the normal. Uh, if at some point uh, it's too low and maybe you want to bring a bit some octave, you can. But I will switch off for now. And um, at any time on this process, we've got some, uh, for example, if I, uh, I bring back the curve to one, if I do some phase correction, I can, with the dry wet here, uh, do the, the force of the effect. In fact. So that's it, uh, complete phase uh, engine. So yeah, to go quick on the scope, it's like a scope uh, for those who don't take out, you we can show, here we got the menu, we can so choose um, the speed, the loop, uh, one bar or bit or stuff like that. Uh, here you can select left, right, uh, mono, sum, which is left and right, divided by two, the side channel, left and right, or mid side. So I will go to mono for now. Uh, we can scale the whole thing, show the transport, and uh, we can zoom uh, to sample res uh, to inspect which is on the of the phase. Because you, you, we could use the phase to align maybe the kick on the bass or, or etc. Um, so what else? Uh, and we can show so we can show main which is the sound of the plugin, the sidechain signal, and assuming show how they will interact if they were to be summed together. So, so we can maybe check if they, uh, if they will spike a lot at the overlap area, if they fast correctly or not. Uh, that can be handy. And uh, yeah, so next there is a frequency uh, modules which act on the magnitude. So basically it's kind of like an EQ but with custom, full custom basic EQ. So we can maybe uh, uh, lower the base. Can shape it a bit uh, the way we want, bring some, some more eyes, bring some medium. Can use smooth wheel to shape the tangent. And uh, right click to add a point, and we, we can make uh, the shape we want. And uh, where it goes deeper, it's once we have a shape, like for example, like this, we can use this. As a custom filter, basically it shifts the curve, and this can be automated. So, for example, here there is a recorder. I will assign the, the, the cutoff to the recorder, and then can record a looped automation, or I could have assigned to an LFO or stuff like that. And here we have got the dry wet, so we can blend between between the affected signal and the so we could maybe assign this to an LFO for example. LFO2 I will uh, I will uh, double click and show maybe shapes sinus and now I will assign this so this dry wet is the frequency I will assign to the LFO So it's blending between the two. Okay. You get the idea. Uh, that's it. So frequency, but it's not limited to this. This is cool, but we can also. I will uh, when you double click, I can in it. Uh, the other thing which uh, which is handy is that we can split in bands. There are bands here, uh, low, medium, and high. And for example, instead of ducking all my all the volume, we could uh, affect only one band. For example, I will affect only the sub. Here, I, I link to the sub, and now we see it only ducks the sub. I can also duck the medium, and only the eyes now pass. And here, no nothing pass. But I could maybe let the medium pass. And here the medium pass, we see it takes. And here in the menu you can have um, 
the slope, it's the, the transition zone between the bond. It's really zero, it's really hard cutting and uh, with a bit of transition. And then, yeah, you can shoot, move the bond uh, like we want. So that can be, and the really cool thing with this system, it's, it's, it's not crossover by that. That means that the dry, the signal, when it's not the cut, it's, it's fully clean. There is no crossover with phase shifting, messing the, spiking the sound. It's uh, really clean. It, it only uh, affects when it's ducking and it's linear phase. So if there was some alignment here, it will preserve the timing of the frequency. So yeah, that's it. Uh, then there is a co correlator. So uh, basically, I will do it a bit. Uh, basically, it analyzes the phase difference between, by default, between left and right. And for example, I will uh, make something. I will voluntarily uh, phase invert the left signal in, in input. And here it shows me it's really out of phase. You see here it's. Um, <laughs> Everything is red, it's really out of phase. When I'm in phase, it's green, it's on this side of the... And what's cool is it shows us by frequency and all the frequency spectrum. And for example, there is a module that can add some stereo effect. Here the bass is mono, I can add some ice, which is a delay on a, a channel. Uh, we put some volume. So here yeah, we can see uh, it created some stereo information, but there is a problem in bass. Here yeah, it's uh, red, uh, it's not good. But the cool thing with the curve is we can force this section to be mono compatible. So now if we look at uh, left and right, here yeah, they, are, they are really uh, they are out of phase at some point, but uh, by forcing to mono. The scene component, we see the fundamental, it's it's clean, it's uh, aligned on uh, both, uh, both channels. So we know this part in mono will be okay, and this part will be okay. So that's uh, quite powerful. Um, and um, yeah, so correlator, we can uh, invert, uh, 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 add some. Uh, information we can blend with the mix between the side signal and the mid part uh, this is to when it forced to mono it use a channel for example here it will use channel left to bring it back to the right or we can invert this it depends on if we have uh, on our input this is only for visual the speed of the um, analyzer and uh, if it's showing both uh, the in phase signal and out of phase or only the out of phase and here it's uh, only visual also it's let us say okay i want my sleep to go to 200 hertz and here it tells me that uh, because it's okay to have uh, it's normal to have out of phase uh, some stereo content in the mid high frequencies what we don't want usually is to have the sub really affect really out of phase and here if i didn't correct i would have a lot of problems if doing if playing on a pay and a mono pa it will be quite problematic but when we correct it's uh, clean so same here we got a dry wet to to those uh, so that's it <coughs> for colorometer colorometer uh, then we have a dynamic processor so here I try to to create something a bit different than the usual um, uh, threshold uh, compressors. Here the main idea it 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 it's analyzing and trying to extract an uh, an envelope, an amplitude envelope that we see here in yellow. So we got uh, usual uh, attack uh, old. If it's too, you want to try to have a kind of um, how to say kind of represent an envelope of the sound so by default it's not so bad um, and then the idea is we can use uh, the basic curve 
to remap this to shape this uh, this uh, volume envelope so here in x it's the input on out uh, here it's the output so for full range uh, i think it's good to maybe push up the gain so we, we go closer to zero db i can do this here so now we know the maximum uh, envelope will be uh, around here so by default it's linear but we can uh, decide to to tame for example if it goes above 2 db minus 2 db i will tame them so here we can lower this shape as we want and uh, and here we see it's uh, taming the, the spike or oh, the advantage with this technique is we could do completely the other one we could decide to raise the lower volumes if i were to do so. On base, we won't really see because uh, dynamically it's already full. But uh, yeah, I would raise. I would say, okay, the lower volumes they will quick. They will be. They will raise more quickly than they should. Uh, so you have to tweak. But I think you will understand uh, the idea. And we can then composite uh, makeup. We'll auto makeup. The, if we tame, it will raise back. And we can adjust the output volume and basically high quality it's really ultra it's a more quality but normally you shouldn't really hear a difference so basically this main idea it acts on a slow envelope it acts on the amplitude envelope which is kind of let's say laggy uh, representation of the waveform uh, here is the same uh, principle the same technique but as a shaper so here it's really a wave shaper directly on the waveform itself so I'll show mono um, I will disable uh, makeup here we will really see if I put a point here here uh, my signal is uh, really high here up I tame all the, all, uh, all the stuff but here it's real time. It means every, it looks at the value of the waveform in in a, in a input, and it will output what the green dot says. So all the sounds here at minus uh, one, they will be at uh, minus two now, minus three even. So you get the idea. And it's also it's act like a wave shaper distortion. For example, if we if I drive this. We can push the volume, so we can make a custom uh, custom distortion. And uh, so you get the idea, I think. And uh, same here, you got uh, high quality mode. And if you uh, want to use over sampling and the over sampling factor, so on bass, it's not uh, really needed, but maybe on eyes. Uh, so that's it, shaper, and this can be modulated in uh, the modulation. We have the dry weight of the shaper, and also the drive, which is basically like if we were doing the the in gain here. For example, if I sing it to LFO, it will it, it will uh, more drive the. Uh, and then uh, the LFO themselves, so they are, uh, for those who know PsyLabs, it's the uh, same kind of curves. By default, it's Bézier. You have the main point, tangent. <coughs> you can uh, right click on a point to delete, right click in the middle of a curve to add a point. Uh, so they are tangent, you can link them. If you right click on a tangent, you can make link, and now they will, uh, they will uh, be linked to for smooth stuff or, uh, or you can uh, link them and then you have uh, many modes uh, you can have um, uh, busy 2 busy 1 it's only one single uh, they will be fused the uh, then we have uh, quadratic it's more round 
Ik ben wel de oude van zo. Ik heb dat het marron. Uh, we hebben linear, which is uh, basically uh, just a line. Uh, and we have some interesting modes, sinus. It, it makes you two, two tangents here, and you can raise for the shape, the amplitude of the shape. Uh, go left and right for the fade in, fade out, and the number of cycles. So it can be quite uh, fun to quickly make, quickly make some LFOs. And uh, there is triangle or uh, square or and step is a normal step. And then behind there is a grid. We can also double click to set the grid how we want, and it will snap to to this grid. And so that segment, then we can uh, move the points here uh, or here. It's a wall curve. Uh, we can scale it, uh, we can select um, like this and uh, scale with onshores or we can use here in the middle uh, to move only horizontal, move only vertical, uh, scale around the center or vertically scale around the center or yes we can use uh, onshores. And if you want to make a time, sometimes you want to select all on top and bottom and it's not easy. If you press control, it selects uh, top and bottom. And then there are some slight uh, improvements to know. Maybe we can scale with uh, a segment with a mousse wheel or scale the wall curve. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's in progress. And uh, yeah, what else to know? And yeah, if you double click, you can uh, init the curve, or uh, we can uh, generate some shapes, for example, sinus, or if I want uh, some steps, uh, or uh, let's uh, generate, uh, maybe I can make some scenes three. Maybe I have a scene, but at some point I want double it and modify it a bit. So we can make a process double size. And uh, yeah, I can change a bit slower, make a bit slower. So yeah, I will have some variations. And uh, here on the LFO, we can set the rate. We can uh, have a more uh, uh, different uh, visualization. Uh, what did I forget? So here yeah, the LFOs by default they are synced to the door. So here yeah, you can see they are in loop mode. But you have also uh, we have we can also uh, make them react to MIDI. So MIDI that will that that means that if you input uh, notes to five to five files on channel two because channel one will be for the preset. Channel 2, you can retrigger the LFOs. Or if we use audio, we can have, use the sidechain, for example, as a, an audio trigger. So here we can use a visualized trigger, and, uh, and we can see. I will uh, remove. So we, we have a, pre, a preview of an envelope here. This I should have fixed. It's a bug uh, that will be fixed. But yeah, I can see the my uh, kick, and I filter it. We can pre-filter it because I want to the, the trigger to be at the start. So I can keep only the high frequency content. So so far I made a filter, pre-filter. Yeah, you can adjust the uh, Q and the uh, frequency. You can listen it, and um, the main idea is you just. I just transient until this yellow thing go above zero dB uh, above the um, zero dB line. If it cross the zero, zero dB line, it will have a trigger on the LFO will uh, restart. If you're using audio, so if you're using audio, you can have uh, some looked here yeah, uh, and some smooth, uh, some smooth. I think you get the idea, but. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that's it. And yeah, so there is a recorder here, uh, which uh, you, with a fader we can click to and uh, record some automation, and um, we can uh, click in this uh, section to draw. 
and we can use model middle click to shift our uh, if moving x uh, x direction we can scale so that can make cool thing to contrast uh, mod modulation or make it uh, less uh, less pronounced or and if we right click we can adjust the, the value so we can see here uh, any time the what what it's really outputting and we can uh, assign to uh, to stuff <laughs> So I think that's it for now. So maybe it will evolve, but I wanted to have a first um, a first uh, uh, alpha to see if it's working uh, and people computer and uh, and, uh, and maybe some feedback. So yeah, one thing I forgot to talk about is the, the spectral engine. It works with FFT, and FFT is always a compromise between frequency resolution and time resolution on here we can adjust the uh, FFT size by default it should give you uh, a good it will be like this by default it should be a um, good setting good compromise but uh, if you raise you will have better uh, frequency resolution but you will lose uh, precision with fast LFOs uh, and this is the time uh, the frequency at each, uh, well, how to explain. It's a bit complex because they are overlapped. So there are many uh, frames computed uh, that overlaps on that the, the rate of the computation. How often the FFT is recomputed. So the lower, it means uh, 32 samples, it's really fast. It, it's, it's, it will be really time pre uh, precise in timing, but it will kill your CPU, <laughs> basically. So uh, same here, it's a trade-off. And uh, yeah, what else? Uh, so input latency, it's more for Ableton Live, which have a shitty PDC. If uh, if your kick have some plugins with latency, uh, Live will will delay the audio, but it won't inform the plugin that receive the main clock. The clock won't be of uh, uh, corrected. So we have to correct manually. Sadly. So you can have a look on the device of your uh, the latency of your uh, chain, and we can uh, increase here. Yeah. So it's not precise when you move here, but you can use mouse wheel to go from one to one or double click to enter value. Or if you press control, it will go to slow increment. So minimum latency it's uh, off by default. It means that even if the spectral engine which will create a lot of latency is off the plugin will delay the signal so that it will be uh, if we switch on the processor will have no jump from no latency to some latency because that will that will create a, a gap so it delays also the the normal processing but if you only, if you don't use spectral engine and just use uh, the LFO tool for uh, volume, maybe we want to remove latency that we don't uh, need. So if minimum latency is on, it will uh, remove the latency of the spectral. But uh, if you are going to to create some uh, some various temp patterns, you don't want to jump see from on to off. So I, uh, it's hard to explain. So I would recommend to let it off for now. And there you have some graphics option yeah, that should be on. It's uh, max FPS. If your computer is slow or uh, you, UI is lagging, you can reduce this. Uh, there is spectrogram uh, gain. Uh, if you use OpenGL and uh, FPS, it's more for debug purpose for now. And I think that's it. And yeah, if, uh, you have a spectrogram. If you double click here, you can show a spectrogram, which can be handy to when we really fuck the face, we can uh, we can see, uh, uh, for example, uh, here. If I go really high, I will see that my, my sub are, uh, are trailing. Uh, anyway, I think uh, I probably let you play a bit and uh, maybe have some feedback i think it will change a bit um, but uh, 
I wanted to have a first uh, first taste. Uh, hope uh, enjoy and uh, see you. Bye.